as I kind of understand, uh, uh, how, how would you call this? What's that phrase? Like uh, rational self-interest, right? Um, I think I kind of liken it to like a, just a small little analogy. And maybe this would be like a, a platform to kick off from is uh, if when we board a plane and uh, we're told all the little safety features of, you know, do this in the event of that kind of a thing. And they're talking about the oxygen masks coming down. They might refer to you having like a, a baby by your side. And your instinct might be to put the oxygen, oxygen mask on, on the baby first because it's your baby and you care about them. And then you'll take care of yourself uh, right after. But the rational thing to do would actually be to take care of yourself so that in the event that um, if, if you were indeed trying to take care of the baby yourself and then you passed out, well, then no one's served by that kind of a thing. You have to care of yourself first, then you have the ability to, to kind of serve others afterwards. Um, that's kind of how my interpretation, I guess, of what rational self-interest and objectivism kind of boils down to. And uh, maybe we can uh, take it from there if that analogy kind of makes sense and if I got that right. Okay, we can start by talking about that. So the so it is a central principle of objectivist ethics that you should pursue your own self-interests and not live for the sake of others. Now, how exactly that uh, manifests itself is not always obvious. And I think there, people often have misconceptions of what that means in practice. And Ayn Rand's view is often straw man, as being the view that you should never care about anyone else. I mean, if anyone who reads Ayn Rand herself with an honest mind is not going to um, come away with the impression that she thinks you should be a, a rude jerk to others and not care about others at all and um, run roughshod over people. Other people are are extremely important. They're, they're a self-interested value. I mean, other people are a great source of value to you. Um, so it behooves you. It's in your own interest to treat others well and that you will be treated well in turn, at least more likely than if you're a jerk to others, then, you know, I'm not going to want to be your friend if you're a jerk to me. Um, <clears throat> to say nothing of something worse than a jerk, like uh, violating my rights by robbing, raping, uh, murdering, that sort of thing. So <clears throat> um, as for the the particular example of the air mask, uh, so the the instruction is to put your own air mask on or oxygen mask before helping others. Now, what is the reason for that? I don't I don't know that they give a reason when they're reciting their instructions. They just tell you what to do. Um, but <clears throat> the the point I mean maybe it's that um, if you don't have your your own air mask or oxygen mask on, then you're not in a position to help others, even though you might want to help others because they matter to you, like your if you have a child. Um, but the the point of helping others, whether it's your child or anyone else, shouldn't be uh, an end in itself. It's because it somehow serves your own interest. Like if if you have a child, that child matters to you. So it's it's an egoistic thing for you to do to care about the child because without that child, uh, you are worse off. That child means a lot to you. You shouldn't have a ch child, uh, children in the first place. If you, if you think it's not going to be in your own interest, you should only have them if you think it benefits your own life. So uh, we could dig into this example more, uh, but that's that's one thing I would say from the perspective of objectivism. If it's true that you should uh, put your own mask on before helping anyone else. It's not because ultimately you'll be better able to help the other person. It's because ultimately it serves your own interest. Ultimately, everything you should do grounds out and it serves your own interest. So um, as I said, we can get into that more if you want, but I'll just pause there and uh, throw it back to you. Uh, yeah, I, I guess that kind of answers my question that I, I think that an analogy is good. Um, it's the reason why I drew it as it's it's your child because just taking objectivism at face value, of course, you're gonna put your, your mask on first, but you introduce a child into the equation instinctively 
for many parents, um, I would think they'd want to serve their child first for the same reasons that you might have mentioned. But the um, rational self-interest thing to do if your interest is indeed that child, like you have a vested interest in that child, whether whether it's simply just passing your genes along, right, um, would be to uh, serve yourself first so that you're better able to serve that child next. Um, if you do that in the reverse order, something could go wrong. Um, actually, maybe it went right. Maybe you got that oxygen mass on the child, the child survives, the ordeal, whatever it is, but in the end, you don't because you didn't have enough time to serve yourself. And then the subsequent events that occur outside of that little catastrophe would not best serve that child, which was your ultimate self interest what you ultimately had your self-interest rooted in um anyway like that child is now parentless and so on and so forth right um so does that all make sense i want to give a somewhat different example that i think might clarify my position i'm not sure um i i've uh fleshed it out sufficiently to to get the view across so um the view is not that you should always act in such a way that you preserve your own life rather than the life of someone else, such as your child. Like, for instance, take take a uh, a lifeboat scenario. Let's say you're you're um, there's a lifeboat. You're there's the danger of drowning. It can only hold one person, and it's either you or your child. Who are hanging on to this lifeboat and one of you has to let go um i mean you could both drown but it, it can only support one person at most <clears throat> now i don't think it's the <laughs> the objective is view that you should necessarily um not drown yourself it, it might be that you should uh it's 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 more in your own interest to allow yourself to drown and let the child your child have the the lifeboat so that it survives now why well maybe <clears throat> your life without that child would just be so meaningless and miserable that the thought of um letting your child child drown might just haunt you for the rest of your life um such that it wouldn't be a life worth living without that child so it could be that uh, it's actually in your interest to just allow your own life to end in that case and let the child survive. I'm not saying that's necessarily the case, but it might be the case. So it's just not obvious um, in, in uh, w what you should do in any particular case. But whatever you should do, it should be that it serves your own interest. But there are some lives that are not worth living. So the fact that you're serving your own interest doesn't necessarily mean you're going to keep yourself alive and breathing under any conditions. Um, so it's it's a more nuanced view, I think, than people often give it credit for. It's it's contextual, depends on the circumstances. Um, but it's still true that everything grounds out in what actions you should do, the sort of action that makes your own life the best possible life. And if it's something that's not serving that end, then you shouldn't do it. And in the, in the going back to the oxygen mask case, um, I mean, we might be able to fill in the details of the case such that it is better to um, put the the mask on on the child first. Um, but whatever is going to provide the reasoning for that is going to be that ultimately it's because it's best for yourself to have that rule in place that you. Uh, put it on the child first. So it just depends on how we fill in the details, but ultimately everything grounds out in what enables you to live the happiest sort of life. Sure. I'll just take this to mean that the analogy is, I guess, sound because your um, lifeboat um, one wasn't really different other than it, it changed a variable that in yours, there was some certitude in the fact that only one person would survive the ordeal or in mine that certainty was absent and that was kind of the point um and then you were describing changing the details like there, there's no it's not necessary to change the details but all that's necessary is to figure out in this hypothetical situation what would be the rational self-interested thing to do and i 
didn't hear you say no that putting your own mask on was incorrect i suppose um it sounds to me that that is the correct thing to do given the lack of detail that i gave which again was the point um so we can probably move on from that because I, I just want to make sure that i'm understanding through an analogy your uh worldview and objectivism correctly and so i, I think we got there um, well, I, I don't. I just want to stay on this this example at least a little bit more. I don't know that it's ethically correct to put your own mask on first, I because I don't know the reasoning behind that. So as I said before, I I, I don't the the people who are telling you the instructions they don't, they don't give you a reason as to yeah. why you should put your own, or at least I don't recall right now them giving a reason. Um, so I, I can. I, I like I I guess if I'm in this emergency scenario, I would follow the instructions um, and put my own mask on first, not because I necessarily agree um, that if I um, grilled them about their reasoning for, for for doing it in that order, I, I might not agree if if they if they had some kind of uh, um, non egoistic or altruistic justification. For doing that like the reason you should put your own mask on first is because uh that will allow you to help others more and that's what we should ultimately be concerned with helping others i would disagree with that but if they had some other kind of reasoning if they had an egoistic kind of reasoning behind that instruction then i would agree with it so i i just don't know right now I think, you're, I, I think the case is oh. it's under described. It, we can't just know exactly. on the face of it whether it's the objectivist thing to do is to put your own mask on first. Uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We have to hear more about the reasoning behind it. We, but we don't. That's why it's a hypothetical. And I gave you the reasoning. The, the reasoning I gave you, whether it's right or wrong in an actual plane that we got on today, it doesn't matter. The hypothetical I gave you was that um, it, just in the context of myself and the child, it would be an, and and um, assuming that it is in my rational self interest for that child to survive, even if I don't, it would still be in my best interest to put my mask on first, so that I can ensure that I'd save the child, rather than the reverse order. Because there might be a question whether or not that um, even if I did save the child by putting their mask on first, I might not survive. But that ultimately might be okay. K, or am I saying this right? Um, yeah, that, that could be okay because th th the end result is I wanted that child to survive more than I wanted myself to survive. That's all you need to know. Um, and then I, I'm got super puzzled when you uh, mentioned if you if you kind of if you were talking to say a flight attendant that was giving the instruction and you found out that the ultimate reasoning behind them asking you to put your own mask on first was so that you can help others and then you would disagree with that i what would be the inverse of that situation to help others first so that you can ultimately help yourself like i <laughs> i got lost with that because in that in that scenario it sounds like you'd just be paralyzed as to what to do if you were told that okay a, a couple things uh first and what you just said, I think you you were saying you were you were stipulating as part of the case that the the reason you should put your own mask on first is because it's in your rational self interest. So in that case, yeah, I would agree. If we're just stipulating that it, it is in your rational self interest to put your own mask on first, then I would say, yeah, that's what you should do. Now, the the next point you you said you're puzzled by, um, if the the flight attendant says the reason you should put your own mask on first is because then uh, you're in a better position to help others. Uh, and, and I said, I would reject that at least as my ultimate reason. Like I shouldn't primarily be concerned in, in my life with helping others. That's not my ultimate goal. My okay. ultimate goal is to live Let's the best I'm happiest the... life for myself. I understand that. Let's say I'm the flight attendant. And I tell you, please put your mask on first in the event of this whatever emergency, right? And you ask me why. And I tell you some altruistic reason for it. You reject that reason. What are you going to do when the event comes, though? Uh, I guess if I 
if I judge that it would be in my rational self-interest to to put uh, the other person's mask on first, then that's what I would do. Even though the flight attendant is telling me, put your own mask on first <laughs> for altruistic reasons, um, since I'm an e egoist, and I think it's best to pursue my own interest. And if I decide that for whatever reason, it's in my own interest to put the other person's mask on first, then I'm going to disobey the flight attendant and put the other person's mask on first. Okay. Can you imagine a reason that you would do that though? Or are you just hypothetically, like, are you just theoretically saying that exists? Um, maybe I can, if you give me a second, maybe I can sure. imagine. So why might I think it's in my rational self-interest to put someone else's mask on first? Um, let's say uh, if I don't do it right away, and help out help my child who's next to me let's say that child is going to have a panic attack panic attack and um going to start acting wild and it's going to be very difficult to um get the mask on later if i don't do it right away um so my only chance to to save the child is to do it right away uh, and I, I, I want us both to survive. And so let's say um, I if if I have to take a risk on one of us dying, I'd rather it be me because, well, let's just say in this case, because it's like the lifeboat case I was describing where without that child, I would be miserable and it wouldn't be a life worth living. So I decide if only one of us is going to die, it's going to be me. And so I immediately help uh, the child um, because that's the only way I can assure it's going to get a mask on and be able to su survive. Because if I don't do it immediately, it's going to start acting in a panicked way and it's not going to be possible to get it on in time. It's, it, it sounds very weak to me because like, it's not impossible to get a mask on a child. Like you're, you're claiming in this theoretical situation that it would be impossible, but I can't imagine a situation, even the super panicked child, in which it's in, it's it's the word impossible should be invoked, right? And that's why in this analogy, it you're you're clearly going to be on the clock, right? And if it's going to be difficult in any scenario to get that mask on the child, you're wasting time getting yours on yourself, and eventually you're going to pass out, and you're going to have trouble, like not just trouble, but it will be. Now we'll use the word impossible to perform that action. So it just seems to me that it would always be in your rational self-interest to put yours on first because this is like a couple second procedure, right? Um, and then you can go on to do, like it's not gonna take you so much time to put your mask on that it will then life or death scenario for your child. Now they're in a super panicked mode where it becomes impossible to put theirs on. Like that that theoretical situation you painted, I don't think exists. Well, you asked me to give you a case where I, I would I would disobey and put it on the other kids first. I mean if if you sure if you're but stipulating maybe I ask for a practical case, even if it's well, in theory. Maybe there isn't one. maybe there isn't one. Um but you know to, to understand the principle um, we have to adjust the details some so I can give you a case. Yeah, and I was um, just addressing the details. I don't think the details exist in where your theory, theoretical position would ever hold. Well, I mean, if you're if you if you're just stipulating as as part of the example that my rational self interest necessarily is going to involve putting my mask on first, then yeah, that's always what I'm going to do. But I, I thought you were asking for like, okay, well, what would ever be a case? <laughs> dream me up a case where you would put the other one so i had maybe i had to give an unrealistic example but that was because of the constraints that i thought you were um giving me i don't think you were so constrained that you had to give an unrealistic example i just don't i i don't think i can be told otherwise but i don't think an example such as that exists that example clearly doesn't work for me and i'm pretty sure you understand why as i described it um but that maybe we just, I don't know, it seems to me as though I kind of uh, maybe found a way that, uh, or a scenario in which you kind of held to a principle, even 
j just just for the sake of holding to it, it seems to me, which I don't know, it's, I guess it could be fine. Um, doesn't seem that rational to me, I suppose. Um, but uh, you, you you said something like, um, it, you said it's true and you were referring to, I guess in a word objectivism, it's true that you should do uh, what best serves you. What, how can you justify that statement? Uh, hold on a minute. I want to um, go back to, you made a comment a, a few seconds ago about I'm holding to a principle just for the sake of holding to the principle or something. I, I mean, I don't follow that. Can you yeah, when we were talking about the flight attendant, you this is going back to when if I as the flight attendant, let's say, told you that the reasoning for putting your mask on first was altruistic in nature, you would reject that. And then you painted me the theoretical um scenario in which you would disobey that if uh your rational self-interest was to take care of your child and in your your I thought crazy theoretical scenario. Um, was that the child could only be saved in that particular way by by putting their uh, mask on first and not taking care of yourself first? That seems to me just painting this picture that we we paint. Uh, well, the, the picture that I painted here for you, it seems that you were just holding to your rational self interest principle in all scenarios, even re rejecting and disobeying the flight in attendant's instruction for the sake of holding to, to the principle rather than just going with what seems to be practical. Because um, you might call everything you described as rational self-interest. I mean, I think I just call it as, call it practical. Like put your mask on first, it's a couple second procedure. Then you can help others if you want to, if you think it better serves you and your rational self-interest. Any reason under the sun, you'll be able to affect as long as you're taken care of first because we're talking about a couple second procedure that will ultimately let you perform whatever it is you want to perform. Okay. Uh, one thought is there's there's no distinction between the moral and the practical, in my view. It's not that one thing is moral or rational, and then some other thing, which is something different, is practical. Uh, on the objectivist view, the, those are always in alignments. The moral, the moral thing is what gets you to your your goal. So it is practical if you define um, your goal appropriately. So if your goal is is uh, to live a happy life for yourself, then what's moral is what allows you to do that. What's practical is also what allows you to do that. They're never going to be pulling in different directions. Um, people often think that there's some distinction between the moral and the practical, but, but I think that's because they have kind of a conflicted idea of what uh, is good, what their standard of value is. So if you, if you think it's immoral to live like Mother Teresa and um, give up riches, live a life of poverty, give up your dreams and ambitions, um th then you might think there that's not a practical way to live if uh if you think practical means living a successful in a conventional kind of sense of like making a lot of money um it, it's not practical to live like mother teresa um but if you think if you don't accept mother teresa as your standard of what's moral if you have uh, your as your standard something like living a happy life for yourself, then you're not going to be thinking it's impractical, um, or you, you will think it is. Pr it's practical to make a lot of money, um, but, th but that's also moral. It's it's not moral to give away all your money to uh, charity or to the poor. Um, that's not necessarily a moral thing to do. We can get more into this, but I just wanted to make that point. There's no difference between the moral and the practical. Now, there was um, one other point I wanted to make uh, in connection with the air mask example. Oh, um, 
it can be the case that you like if the flight attendant tells me that the reason you should put your own mask on first is some altruistic reason, like it allows you to help others. Um, I might judge that there's also egoistic reasons to do the same thing. Right. So I might think she's mistaken. Um, like I, I might agree that I should, I should put my own mask on first, but for different reasons, I have egoistic reasons for yes. putting my own mask on first. She gives me altruistic reasons for putting my own mask on first, but I'm going to go with the e egoistic reasons. So, um, and this might, uh, help, um, with your way of thinking, like if you think it's just theoretically impossible or just too outlandish to suppose there is a case where it would be in your own self-interest to put the other person's mask on first, I can now say, okay, fine, I'll, I'll accept that. But then if I am going to put my own mask on first, it's going to be for my own egoistic reasons, not for the altruistic reasons that the flight attendant gives me. That was the only other point I wanted to add on that. Yeah, I wish you would have said that first because your instinct was to go, I'm going to disobey the reason I already know I disagree with. So that's what kind of feel like gummed up that part of the conversation a little bit. Um, I'm, a, I'm aware that that exists. I already described that. Um, I described it at the onset of the, when I gave you an analogy, um, just to, I think, see whether or not you thought that was an apt analogy so so you can understand that I understand your point of view. So like maybe can i just get a yes or no does that analogy work for it to describe what objectivism or rational self-interest entails just yes or no or is it too complicated is, I, is it I think it's i think it's too complicated i i don't think we can take the um the air mask as as uh, um we, we can't read too much into it we 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 need to know the reasoning behind the instructions. So, as you said yourself, I stipulated the reasoning. Okay, so, so it, it, I mean, if you're stipulating that the reasoning is that you should put it on yourself first because that's ultimately what's in your rational self interest, then yeah, I can sign on to that. But then it's not. I'm not asking would... you to sign on to like. I... I'm trying to illustrate that I think I understand this worldview and this is how I can understand it. Do you think I understand it properly? I'm I'm not sure yet. Okay. I, all right. Um, because, I mean, one reason I'm not sure is because you said before that you were puzzled when I said that I would disobey the flight attendant if she gave an okay. altruistic reason. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. You already described why, even. Because you could have easily said, well, I have my own egoistic reasons and self-interested reasons, rational self-interested reasons to do so, so I'll, pro I'll do it anyway, and these are some of the reasons why. But your instinct was to say, I'm going to disobey, which is what puzzled me. It just seemed to be like holding to a principle, no matter what the scenario entailed, it's just going to hold to that principle. It, it doesn't matter. Um, you couldn't come up on your own with just the fact that like, yeah, there's, there's definitely reasons why I would do what she, she or he or whatever says, but not for their reasoning for my own. That's what puzzled me. Okay. Um, I can see how that might be unclear. Like if I say disobey, um, you might think, well, that means that I'm not going to uh, put on my own mask first. I'm going to put someone else's mask on first. That's what that would mean. May, may, I guess it would have been better to say I I might or might not obey. I, I mean, the issue is really not obedience. It's going by own, my own judgment. So I might or might not act in accord with what she says. Right. But if I do act in accord with what she says, it's going to be because it serves my own interest, uh, not right. because it serves someone else's interest. So maybe right. that would have been a better way to put it than just disobey. Absolutely. And I understand that, but we didn't need to go that far. All we really needed to do was to the analogy without the flight attendant even <laughs> um, makes sense in a way that clues you in that I am at least somewhat understanding the worldview. Maybe not completely, but somewhat I'm getting there. I'm on the right track. I have a good springboard for it, maybe.
Yeah, I, I think so. Okay, cool. All right. So we got there.